Hey everybody and welcome back to the Complete Dentures 1 course at New York City College of Technology. My name once again is Professor Oscar Galvis. This lecture is number five in the set and we will be covering articulators today. To begin, what is an articulator? An articulator is a mechanical instrument that represents the temporomandibular joints and jaw to which the maxillary and mandibular cast may be attached to simulate all or some of the mandibular movements. Articulators simulate the positions and movements of the patient's lower jaw in relationship to the upper jaw so a prosthesis with proper occlusion can be made. One of the takeaways from this presentation should be that uh, a majority of articulators actually, even though they represent the lower jaw movement, they have the upper member of the articulator that opens and closes. This is due to ergonomics. It's easier to have an articulator on a table and open and close the upper member than it would be to move the lower member of the articulator. Regardless, there are a variety of different articulators available and we'll cover some of the more common ones today. So first we talk about a very common form of articulators these are hinge articulators. Uh, you'll see uh, another common form of these type of articulators. The ones we see uh, visualized here are the plastic disposable articulators. Uh, these are used with stone model basis, very common for uh, small quadrant trays, uh, meaning that the impressions have only captured a quadrant of the mouth. Um, but even these disposable plastic hinge articulators can also be used for uh, full arch models. Now, given the theory behind articulations, since this hinge represents so close and so small to the back of the models, the arc of closure is not transferred that well when thinking about how the shape of a human skull, how the condyles are by the ear and the teeth are so far away from the condyle. Uh, using the theory of Baumwell's triangle, it's about 110 millimeters, I believe. So uh, these type of articulators uh, will never represent that distance, therefore they're not the most accurate articulator. So one of the more common hinge articulators you'll see in many laboratories uh, is the metal hinge articulator. So this is the variety and it's the simplest uh, that they make. It can make only basic opening and closing movements. Now with this articulator, uh, although it does have a spring in the back and you can move the uh, condylar elements left and right, uh, it's not really meant for those movements. So uh, it really doesn't have the ability to go into lateral, left and right, or protrusive, forward and back excursions. Uh, however, this seems to be the uh, very common go-to articulator for many different types of laboratories, whether that be uh, removable dentures or uh, fixed work. Uh, the more advanced articulators should be used for more complicated cases. Uh, each one of these articulators has a specific place in dentistry. In my specific opinion, I see these mainly used for uh, small single units and bridge work for fixed prosthodontics. When it comes to full mouth rehabilitation, in other, in other words, uh, a complete denture setup, that is definitely better done on something that better represents a human arc of closure which is on more advanced articulators that we'll get to in a little bit. Next we have our semi-adjustable articulators. Now the semi-adjustable articulator has just enough adjustable features to give a fair to good simulation of a patient's actual mandibular movements. This articulator is uh, a one that majority of you will be using during the semester while setting your complete denture cases. And you'll also be using them in other courses as well. So when it comes to semi-adjustable articulators, many articulators in this class can compensate for the angle of a person's articular eminence. That's right by the condyle. You can see on this metal dial how there are numbers there that, uh, that range all the way to 30, 30 degrees. And then we have a horizontal and vertical overlap conditions that it can also replicate and the amount of progressive mandibular translation, or as also known as side shift. 
So these are used for making all forms of removable prosthetics and for moderately complicated fixed prosthodontics as well. So that is why we'll mainly be using these within our complete denture courses. One thing to take note of is the use of face bows. So what is a face bow? Uh, well, a face bow is used uh, as a procedure and it attaches to the maxillary cast onto an articulator the same way that the maxilla relates to the temporomandibular joints. And that's as you can see on this uh, photo to the right. Uh, you'll see that there is a bite fork, although not visible, it is within the patient's mouth. Uh, on that bite fork is a bite registration material. The face bow enters within the ears and it gives a measurement between the maxilla and the TMJ. Uh, basically, it's going to orient the maxilla exactly the way it relates to the patient's skull. And the purpose why we use this is because not only does it translate the arc of closure, the way that the lower jaw open and closes into the maxillary, particular to each specific patient, but it can also record things such as cants. Not everybody's uh, maxilla is completely level, and sometimes you might notice that uh, people's teeth are slanted either to the right or to the left. Uh, that kind of dimensional change or, or aesthetic difference between people can be translated through the use of a face bell transfer. So this transfer then is attached to the articulator as you see in the image to the left. So the transfer in combination with a maxillomandibular relationship record, which we'll talk about in a little bit, allows the opening access of the patient to be transferred to the articulator. So we can see here that uh, there is an immense contraption here that allows the bite fork and the position of the maxilla uh, bite fork onto the articulator exactly the way it was positioned when retrieving the record from the patient's mouth. So you have the face bow that's taken in the, uh, the clinic or by a clinician, and then you have the face bow transfer, which is used to mount that recording, that measurement, uh, onto the articulator itself. And this is one of the most accurate ways you can transfer information from the patient's mouth and skull to an articulator. So those face bows are used for semi-adjustable articulators, and they are also used for fully adjustable articulators. So fully adjustable articulators are used on the most demanding types of cases, that is uh, detecting and treating patients whose jaw movement patterns are not normal and completing full mouth fixed prosthodontic restorations. So we spoke before about achieving different types of uh, maxillomandibular relationship records and using those records to transfer the information over to the semi-adjustable or fully adjustable articulators. So the articulator's adjustments are set according to the three-dimensional methods of measurement, which were called the maxillomandibular relationship records. So let's talk a little bit more about what these records are and what they mean, okay? So there are two types of maxillomandibular relationship records, according to the Air Force Manual. And if we see here, we find uh, different types of records being taken. We notice that the bite registrations to the left are not with a typical centric occlusion, yet uh, records that are taken during certain excursions, right? So when we talk about these different types of maxillomandibular records, uh, the first is going to be a template that relates the lower cast against the upper cast in the same way the jaws relate when the record is made in the patient's mouth. So for instance, a centric relation record. Uh, centric relation being a condylar position, not a tooth-to-tooth -to -tooth relationship like centric occlusion is. So this is uh, something very similar to centric occlusion. Uh, it could be centric occlusion if teeth are present. If not, and we're working with an edentulous patient, then we're working with condylar position, and the clinician will most likely put them in a centric relation position that's captured uh, with your occlusal rims. Uh, after this first template has been achieved, the centric relation bite uh, per se, then the casts are then mounted with the second kind of maxillomandibular relationship record. And it's used to set the articulator into the, uh, into the adjustments. And basically we're looking at records that are taken during lateral, left and right excursions, and then a protrusive excursion. So between those uh, different types, the Air Force dis 
describes them as two two different types of maxillomandibular relationship records. When really in actuality, if you were to count them individually, you would have a type of centric relation record, and then you would have a lateral record of right and left lateral excursions, and then you would also have a protrusive record. So really it would be four separate bites uh, as you would mount them and use them and adjust the articulator accordingly. These are all things that will lead to a successful case. All the generic things we've covered today about articulators. Um, it's really the basis. It's the meat and potatoes of dentistry and articulators. There are so many different types of articulators out there uh, and many companies that fabricate and offer uh, different types of articulators. But the overall consensus is articulation is a very important part of the uh, restoration process no matter the type of restoration or specialty that you are planning to get involved in. So the thought here is that when it comes to articulation there are many things that have to occur and have to occur properly in order for the case to be a success. And the first is that the clinician is able to capture the proper relationship records during the occlusal rim visit. Uh, this is obviously specifically geared towards complete dentures since we're talking about uh, complete denture fabrication in this course. So as we've seen the image here, uh, a patient is getting their occlusal rims tried in. They've been adjusted and now a bite registration material is being squeezed between the maxillary and mandibular occlusion rims to achieve a bite registration. Uh, these then get sent back to the dentist uh, I'm sorry, it gets sent back to the dental laboratory. And the dental laboratory has the job of taking these records and mounting them correctly on the articulator. So yes, the bite does have to be correct, but it doesn't stop there. There are nuances and things that dental technicians must check and make sure that the bite is firmly seated, that there's nothing interfering with the bite, the casts don't block each other. Sometimes the retromolar pad areas or hemular notch areas, tuberosity areas are so bulky and solid on a cast that when in the mouth, those tissues are soft. So sometimes they wouldn't interfere in the mouth, but they would interfere on stone models. So always checking that the bite is passive. Uh, they sit within each arch uh, snugly and making sure that uh, if you're using a face bow that you are uh, using that face bow transfer properly, transferring the information over. And that will lead to a correct articulation will lead to a correct setup. And as we see here, this case was mounted, this case was set. Uh, patient was a class two occlusion, meaning that they were retrognathic, their lower jaw was pushed backward. Uh, I think we'll look more at this case in future lectures. But overall, a correct bite should lead to a correct articulation, which then leads to the correct result. So in this Dentures 1 course, where we will end this semester, will be at this stage during the uh, complete denture wax try-ins. So once again, correct bite, correct articulation will lead to a correct setup and a correct try-in. This will conclude our lecture for today. Uh, please don't forget your required readings from pages 173 to 196. Those will cover uh, all of the concepts of articulators, the different types of articulators, and things of that nature. Uh, also within this module you will also find uh, two instructional videos. One instructional video will show how you would clinically mount a set of occlusal rims uh, in the absence of a face bow. Not every clinician will use a face bow so it's important to you to understand how to mount in the absence of a face bow. And as well as the thought process of within the course that you are in and participating in you do not have a patient where occlusal rims can be tried and a bite can be taken. So we have taken measures so that we are able to mount the case uh, the same for each student so that the setup and the processes are the same so that grading and evaluation is fair. So please take a look at those two videos. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Uh, thank you for listening and have a great day.